Thanks for um, getting up so early. It's not really that early, is it? It's what time is it? What time? Uh, Nine thirteen. I guess that's early for an off season, perhaps. It's yeah. What time? What time do you go train normally? Like, what's it? What's a normal day look like in James Whelan's life? I reckon I average the rollout time of probably nine oh five. Yeah. Probably. And is that rollout nine oh five to go training or to go to the brew shop to then go training? Never, never to the brew shop. Okay. Yeah. Good. Once uh once I got kid on, I yeah. I don't really like to sit at coffee shops. That's what uh is for after training, I guess. Do do you train with people or do you train solo? Uh I train mostly solo. Uh particularly here in Andorra. Uh there's not many people to train with. Um, which is a good thing because uh you have to kind of be on the same wavelength with someone when you're training here in Andorra because it's only climbing. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, in Girona, I do try to train with a few others, try and get group rides going. I find, uh, yeah, when I've been training by myself up here in the mountains, I want to go back to Girona and do a chop off for group ride. Just get yeah. the endorphins going. Yeah. Do they have like bunches? Like, you know, like, or whether it's, whether it's like a, a local bunch of just, punters or pros or I don't know what what is the bunch scene in Girona yeah yeah uh there should be bunches organized but there's not there's so many cyclists there that everyone just does their own thing there's nothing really organized there's there's definitely the potential to have what Melbourne has but for whatever reason uh no one's ever tried to organize it uh yeah it'd be really cool I would really like that yeah. Where, um, so where are you at? What, what's going on? It's at the end of October. I'm yeah. currently in Andorra in Soldo, uh, just before the snow season kicks in. I think it'll kick in in a few days, three days is meant to have a big dump. So, yeah. Uh, not sure. Well, I'm obviously in the off season. I'm coming to the end of my off season, actually. Uh, it's been over two weeks now, no bike riding. Uh, it's been nice. I haven't traveled anywhere. I've just, uh, stay put here. Uh, just relaxing, uh, not bouncing around too much. Uh, and it's been good, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately I'm in a, a bit of a sticky situation in that I'm still looking for a job for next year. Uh, yeah, there's a, a few other riders in my situation. Um, it seems to be quite a competitive year, uh, but yeah. So that's my main thing that I'm hanging out for now is just uh, trying to put pen on paper, uh, which will hope, which I was hoping uh, I would have had done by the time we had started this interview. Because, uh, like, I, I, yeah, we were talking a few weeks ago, and I was, uh, yeah, hoping that uh, I would answer the call, being like, you know what, Alex, uh, it's, it's all irrelevant now. <laughs> so, yeah. like, what what are you what are you doing in that situation? You've got like. It's such a big thing. Like are you, are you just sitting on the couch. And your manager's looking after it all. Are you going after teams? Are you talking to people? Like, how, what do you do in this kind of situation? Yeah, I mean, this is the first time that I've had to deal with this situation. I was fortunate enough to have uh, a very long contract uh, with EF Pro Cycling. It was basically three and a half years if you include the stage year. So this is the first time where I'm where, um, understanding. Uh, the dynamics of, uh, between the teams, between the agents, and then also between the rider. Uh, one thing that I'm learning is that the rider has as much play as and as much negotiation as the as the agent does. Um, one thing that I'm learning is that teams and and managers are more likely to uh, give you time if if you're talking to them directly as opposed to your agent, because of course your agent's going to say, "Hey." Jimmy's amazing. You should sign him. Yeah. But, uh, like this is purely what he's paid to do. So imagine this is going to be like, well, yeah, I know, buddy. But uh, maybe if, if, if I approach them and they hear from me directly and, and get to know me a bit more on a personal level, then uh, that's tend to work. It hasn't worked yet, but that's been a way of getting the negotiations and conversations going. Um, but also getting in contact with uh, 
with riders that are, are highly respected in the peloton, the really good riders that could vouch for me. And I've had a few riders uh, kindly offer up their time uh, and talk to their to their GMs and talk to a few of their contacts that they have. Um, so I've been pretty lucky in that regard to have a few good good souls help me out in that regard. Uh, and I think, uh, from what I understand, uh, for people in my situation, uh, where I don't have a huge amount of leverage, like having someone vouch for me on my behalf and to explain my situation and my, my story to, to another GM, uh, goes, uh, way further than anything that my, my agent can do, for example. Um, Mm. and that's not to say that my, my agent isn't any good. I think my agent, uh, is quite exceptional actually he's been he's been really good uh so far yeah Yeah, how much do teams value like the the good bloke factor like the the you've got references from other reputable riders and that you that they're they're vouching for you that you'll fit in with this team on top of the obviously the talent that's there um but that being one of the biggest challenges of your level is that everyone's so good I think that good bloke factor is becoming less and less of uh, a play, uh, if this makes sense. As the sport gets think, more, as the sport gets more competitive to have a job, uh, yeah. and that's the way, it, and that's the way it should be. Really, I mean, it's a, it's an awesome job. Uh, it's a professional sport. At the end of the day, you're signing a, a, a bike rider, not a, a bloke, but you are. But but at the same time, yeah. Uh, it's difficult. I mean, uh, I would say that I, I mean, from what people say, they're, they're happy to vouch for me. And, and so I guess it hasn't quite pulled off the, the good bloke card yet. Uh, hopefully <laughs> it will. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I know it definitely helps. Uh, you definitely, it won't, it won't get you a contract, but it could definitely not get you a contract. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Uh, yeah. You, like, uh, yeah, a guy in my position. If uh, if I was annoying and high maintenance, and uh, guys didn't like me, I I would be uh, there'd be no way I could get a contract. I think mm. basically. So are you just uh, like you've got every world tour team on a sheet, and you're just working through them? Kind of. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have done that, and you also work out which teams are full, uh, and then. A lot of the teams are already full. How many full? Are full? Uh, almost all of them. All of them have finalized their roster. However, they always say they're full. And then maybe <laughs> at the very end of the year, they'll be like, oh, we might just like uh, plus one someone into our into our group because uh, because we can. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that happens a few times. But, uh, yeah, there's not many – there's not that many teams with spots left. Uh Last week or so, uh, there was a few spots here and there, which uh, I was on the, I was in the room, but I didn't get a chair, unfortunately. Uh, it was between maybe two or three spots, maybe one spot. Uh, and yeah, maybe the team went for a, a younger rider, for example. There's a lot of, there's still a lot of hype under younger riders, uh, which is fair enough. Um, yeah, uh, that's definitely been something that I've noticed. I'm not old, but I'm not young anymore. Um, yeah. So, I mean, my experience level, I'm still basically like an 18 year old in cycling, but uh, yeah, uh, it gets tricky. Um, so, when, when yeah, does, last week. Yeah. Sorry. When do, when does EF tell you? Like, when do they say, Jimmy, we don't have a spot for you next year? Uh, so, in my, in my situation, I found out. Uh, my first race back after my uh, breaking the pelvis and a jaw, which was the first Italian race I did, which was uh, Toscana, which was, I don't know when that was, maybe end of early October. and Yeah, early October, oh, end of September. Yeah, Jesus, late. Yeah, but you can kind of smell it though. Uh, so were you looking before that point? Were you going, yeah, do you know yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially with my with my two big crashes this year. 
I didn't know if I was actually going to get to the start line and I actually didn't know if getting to the start line was a good thing because maybe I wasn't up to the form to do a good race. Uh, yeah, so I was definitely talking to teams before I even started racing because I wasn't sure uh, with the lack of race days, uh, with the lack of training, if I would be up to the level to to really leverage myself with some good rides. Uh, fortunately enough, I was actually to ride really well. I don't know how I did. Uh, <laughs> I guess I guess when you're, when you're up for contract, uh that's a pretty good way to have good legs um yeah you can go pretty deep uh yeah uh and it also helps when when the team wins when when we're racing so that was quite good that was uh the two the two wins that michael valgren had yeah uh before the world championships uh yeah so that was end of september uh every world tour team is meant to officially uh provide like a, a letter to the rider saying we do not intend to re-sign you uh, but they don't say we are not re-sign you so they will so in a lot of cases riders where the team will say actually we will sign you but we're going to cover our own backs here and still give you this letter in case we don't yeah. if this makes sense um, yeah i'm not sure if you're aware of that nah so did they tell you they tell you why they say like you know what, Jimmy, it's just not, it's not, there's not going to be another contract because um, we've, we're taking this direction or. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately I did not get an explanation, uh, which is, is disappointing. Uh, and I want to make sure that I don't speak poorly of EF in this situation because they've been incredible to me. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately I did not get a, a, a proper explanation from uh yeah, the the top of the management within EF, uh, which is just how it goes. I think that's if that's just uh, how it rolls. Uh, yeah, I know within EF this year they've they've signed eight new riders, uh, which is which is a lot. Uh, so I'm not the only one on our team where this has happened. Yeah. Um, I know there's some boys in the team who are who are still sitting on their couch like I am at the end of October still. Uh, looking for a contract. I know some guys have, have found a, a job for next year, which is great. Um, but yeah, with the team signing eight new riders, obviously uh, you can only have so many riders in a team. So if it's, what goes in must go out too. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so I guess I, yeah, there was no proper explanation. Uh, yeah, I know the, the directors were disappointed. The, the staff were disappointed for me. Uh, and a lot of the riders were too. Uh, I think uh, if I had have not shown in Italy that I was back up to the standard and racing really well, then I would have been like, you know what, fair, fair play. Like uh, uh, the, with the two big crashes, it's too much of a gamble to mm -hmm. know if I was going to get back to the athlete that I was. Uh, but I'm pretty proud of the sort of personal level that I was able to uh, get back to, yeah, some some good form and racing the final of the, some of the hardest races of the year. So yeah, that was uh, important on a personal level and also on a, on a uh, contract level. It was important for teams to see that I was back to normal. I wasn't just back at the start line. I was actually yeah. back on the finish line. So yeah. Um, so, yeah. Where, so where does the decision actually come from? Who is it the, like the general manager of the team or the DSs make calls? Like where, where's the, Where's the contract and team direction actually coming from? From, from what I can see, uh, each World Tour team has a different process. Uh, some, some World Tour teams have a really structured process where, uh, yeah, like a rider has to meet certain expectations and these are uh, written out and pretty clear. Uh, but in some teams, the, the, the CEO of the teams or the general managers of the teams will, will just determine... Uh, what roster they want. So at EF Pro Cycling, uh, Jonathan Vorters, uh, he runs the show with regards to contracts and with regards to the team roster. Um, and yeah, so he's basically the one that makes the, makes the calls. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, I wish he, I wish he re-signed me. I, I, I didn't want to leave. Uh, yeah, I love the team. So, and I love my job at the team. I've had a pretty good three, three years, uh, but yeah, uh, he can uh, choose who he wants on the team. That's, that's his, his 
absolute job on the team. And, and he does a really good job. Uh, last 10 years, he's, he's been able to have a really uh, competitive team on a really small budget. Uh, so I can't, I can't really speak critically of him. He does a pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty good job at doing what he does. Do you, um, did you get a call from him? Did you get, did you get anything? Unfortunately not. Uh, yeah. I think, so uh, I reckon that's a cycling thing. I don't know. For some reason, I don't feel like anyone does on the way out well. I know on the way out's hard to do. No. It's like, but if you, yeah. if you put yourself in like a business scenario on the way out, it's like a, it's, it's part of the package. If you look at it, even like a business experience, it's like the, the first and the last thing that, that happens to that person. It's so important. And if they're, they're doing, it seems like they're doing the way in really well now, like especially for the Westerners um, as they're coming to the Euro yeah. zone. In, in's always been pretty good. And the out is still just that. See, you, mate. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Well, here's, here's your letter of resi, um, of that we're not going to sign you again and all the best finding a team in October. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's just how it rolls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, it's easier for the team to announce a new contract writer and, and, and talk about hype, but they're not going to put an Instagram post saying, See, see you later, Jimmy. Uh, good luck. Thumbs up. It's, yeah. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, I think uh, it's it seems to be a bit of a trend uh, within cycling. Yeah. Like riders will not get another contract and they just will never hear from from that team again or anyone within that team. And uh, yeah, I, it's, yeah, I'm not sure why that is. It's definitely not right. I'm not saying it's right. Uh, and yeah, it should be dealt differently. I know within t- other teams, though, they'll have an official process. They'll have a call from uh, the GM uh, explaining why they decided to do this. Uh, and yeah, wishing them well and, and all these things. Uh, but at the same time, uh, that call doesn't change anything. It's just, no. you know, but yeah. So, uh, yeah. Do you think they should uh, bring that? like rule that you have to have a letter to them by September forward as in earlier on in the year. So bring it into August into like, yeah. yeah. September's late. It is late. Yep. Uh, but I guess it's kind of on the road yeah. manager to, to read the room a bit. You have to read the room. Uh, and, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you kind of have to realize you have to look after yourself in that regard. Uh, it's not the team's problem; it's the rider's problem. Yeah, um, but that's a huge yeah. win that you got got back on the bike, and it sounds like you were you were back in good nick. So it's still there; you still got the belief in yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if I if I had have gone come to those races and wasn't racing well and was questioning if I was able to get back to the level after my two big crashes this year. The, the job's too difficult to enjoy if you're not up to the standard. Mm. So I wouldn't even be looking for another job next year if I didn't think, if I'd just be, uh, yeah, yeah, not doing Did a good it feel job really year. good? Like when you got to that point in the race where you went, oh, you know what? Like I've still got it. I'm still, I'm still there. It was, it was pretty satisfying, like cracking caffeine gels again. Because it means that you're getting ready for the fu- you're, you're getting ready for the final, and this was like after the year I had and the two crashes to have just to have that feeling and like having having the helicopter there, having the motos with the TV camera, it was like oh this is yeah. like I squeezed myself pretty dry this year, but it's actually worth it. Yeah, uh, yeah it was. Yeah, I had so much fun. Uh, yeah, and even like. Uh, I still I still played the team role. I still sacrificed my personal rides for the team in these Italian races, which I was proud to do, which I was totally fine with. Uh, uh, which some riders perhaps would have difficulty doing because obviously when you're on contract and the team says, hey, we're not free sign you, it's difficult to ride in the wind for your team. But uh, yeah, I mean, other teams see that. Uh, they say if you're racing the final and they're doing a good job for the team, it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, but uh, yeah, I was I was pretty happy uh, just being able to finish off a year with something to 
to smile about. I didn't know whether I would be able to. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're a paid bike rider. You're there to get back to health, back to racing, and then see what you can do. Uh, so it's the least I can do, to be honest. Is um, so you're starting to make like contingency plans. You're starting to think um, pro Conti or whatever it's called now, World Series or something. Um, like well, that pro tour, pro tour teams. Yeah. Um, is is that where you think, what like what are you going for everyone now, or is it just World Tour still? What, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've spoken to my agent about this. Uh, getting a World Tour gig will be quite difficult with the amount of spots left and the amount of riders that are still on the market. Uh, so we're talking to pro uh, pro tour teams also. Uh, but as a result, with so many World Tour riders up for contract and also having the same idea as me, there's, you know, 12 World Tour guys knocking on the pro Conti guy's door and he doesn't know who to pick. And usually it comes down to uh, the nationality of the rider or and a few other things. Um, yeah, it's, a lot of this is, is political, unfortunately. Is bike um, exchange full? Bike exchange is officially full, from what I understand. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that, that was, I think you're it was too, pretty you're close. You're too on the up for bike exchange. You're not old enough. Yeah, I, I, I would love to have run for bike exchange next year. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, I know it was close, uh, yeah. really close. Oh. Um, so yesterday I found out, uh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, oh Jimmy. Uh, yeah, which was disappointing. Uh, I think it would have been super motivating to be in a, an Australian outfit. But uh, yeah, well, are you going hopefully. Mentally? Like, how, how do you, like, because that must just be like this emotional roller coaster. Like, let's just say this week, yeah. all right, bike exchange is an option Monday. Tuesday, I'm having the discussion. We'll have a call Wednesday for you. Oh, no, sorry. It's not It's not going to happen. And then you're back, back, yeah. back again. And then you ride the next wave. And then you ride the next wave. Like, it's, it's mentally so it's draining. Happened. So I've, I've ridden seven waves now. Uh, oh. And I've been really close on a lot. Uh, and then it's just, you get like, I get my message from my agent, the voicemail on the WhatsApp. Uh, and I can tell straight away whether it's like, hey, Jimmy, or... Hey Jimmy, oh, you know? <laughs> I'm like, do I even need to finish the voicemail? I know what I know what the situation is. It's it's really difficult, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I am doing fine, and it's not that I don't care. I care a lot. This is everything, uh, but I think in this situation, you have to remove the emotions and remove everything and just be super. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the word is. Uh, pragmatic. It's yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I can't control this at the moment. No, I, I could, I could control, I control, I could control my situation in the Italian races. That's when I was stressed. Cause I knew, uh, how I ride could determine whether I have a job next year or not. Um, so that was stressful. But then once the off season started, I was actually super relaxed and I was quite, comfortable with my days i wouldn't say i'm uh bouncing out of bed these days being like <laughs> oh, what's what's on the cards today but i'm still doing things like i'm still running i'm keeping my head clear i'm getting outside uh so i'm still exercising if i wasn't exercising and i was just like for example just going out and drinking beers i think yeah. uh i would be a head case that's for sure yeah. it's a slippery slope if you're yeah, nursing uh, a Sunday hangover, and then yeah, you're just dealing with with these stresses. Uh, so yeah, you can deal with it uh, if you're able to approach it in the right way. Uh, I was hoping not to have to deal with it for this long, uh, but yeah, I could be yeah, I could be uh, still in this situation in a few months. I could be rocking some map kit in uh <laughs> in, at nationals you know well i'll give you the hot tip it's good kit it's good kit yeah um finally so out yeah, of that rap yeah. rubbish you would treat yourself to some some fine map nicks for um next year and you'll be uh you won't know yourself yeah at least i look good exactly um but yeah my my parents would check in like basically every day because they're 
they're more stressed than I am for me, to be honest. I'm more uh, stressed than you are for you. I mean, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm stressed, but I'm concerned. No, it's good. That that piece you said before yeah. about like you focus on the things you control, that's that's really cool. Yeah. But I know like uh, other writers throughout the years that have been in this situation uh, have been like devastated by this and super anxious, super depressed. Uh, like, uh, like in my situation, uh, I need to wait for my, my, my job contract because uh, I need to renew my residency. Uh, but I can't do that until I get a contract mm. uh, and it expires in, in a few weeks. Um, and so I can't go back to Australia until I get a contract because I need to renew my residency. Yeah. So I'm just kick, kicking about here, which is not the worst situation. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's nice being here, but I would like to go back to Australia. Um, yeah. Especially yeah. now that Melbourne's back to normal. Back up uh, and running. It's back up. Yeah. And running. Um, I timed it pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Time, well, like, yeah. If you, if you can get a job soon, that timed it perfectly. And you can potentially yes. just pop back into Australia, just roll back in, no issues. I can, yeah. I could be, yeah, in the living room the next day, which was pretty cool. Your injuries this year, what, can you just run me through what you actually had, what you've, what you've overcome? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, before my first crash, I did the national championships, came sixth. I was happy with that. Uh, uh, and then I did, came to Europe. And then got called up to do the UAE tour. Uh, Road for the boys. Did a pretty good job. Was happy with that as well. And uh, yeah, then it was a tour of the Basque country uh, in the wet. I slipped out in the rain, going dead straight, just lost my rear wheel. There's a few other guys that crashed also. And I broke my pelvis and my shoulder and my ribs. Um, and so that knocked me out for, for two months. And then, and his pel- pelvis uh, is pretty serious, no? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty serious. So, like, you have the the ball of your femur, and then the into the pel- pelvis. I, I basically clapped and then cracked it in heaps of places in the socket. If that makes sense. The actual ball itself, um, or the yeah, no, no, the the cup part. I don't know what that's called. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I get what you mean. So, yeah, 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 and uh. Yeah, it was a pretty serious break. Like I was, uh, yeah, uh, wheeling around on an office chair in my apartment for six weeks because I couldn't use crutches because I had a broken shoulder also. Was the contract um, starting to get on your mind at that point? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's never a good year to break a bone when you're on contract. Um, so it was a little bit and I was like, okay, now I've just got to see when I can get healthy. And then once I get healthy, see when I can get back to cycling fitness. And then, then I'll call up the team saying, Hey, I'm good to go. What races can I do? Um, and so, yeah, I was basically good by July. And then uh, I raced a tour of Wallonie and uh, hit a big old pothole about 100K into stage one and snapped my handlebars. Um, first race back. Com- first race back, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I was going back through the convoy, so I was going really quick on a downhill. It was like 75k an hour. Any bars um, just snapped in half? Yeah, I don't know what exactly happened, but the guy behind me said that I just, yeah, pretty similar to what looked like the, uh, what happened on that track bike with, uh, with Alex Porter. Alex. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know exactly. Uh, I was knocked out and, and all these things. So, and what um, else did you, what, did you break bones again? Yeah, I broke my shoulder again, uh, my hand, uh, and then my jaw, and then my ribs again. Um, just did the old Superman onto the <laughs> ground. I'm lucky to still have my my right nipple, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I've got a new new scar in here. Uh, it looks stupid when I grow out stubble because I've got like – I mean, I could grow out stubble like yours, but then I yeah. just have this big patch here of just. Stubble. Yeah, I've got. Can you see that in my eyebrow? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that kind of looks cool though. Yeah, it well, that that's cool. from stitches. That's not by design. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But this was uh, twenty-four stitches, so it was a pretty big. Uh... Yeah, I only had two. 
you win. Yeah. At did the hospital you, and, before they... Did you wake up in the ambo or like what, what was the... I was... I remember parts of the crash. Uh, yeah, it was pretty... Uh, unfortunately, I wish I didn't. Um, so... That one worse? Like, yeah, like this was a lot worse. So it was just lots of blood and I didn't know where the blood was coming from. That was the biggest concern. And just looking at people and seeing them look at me, it's like, yeah. oh, like what's... And they were, they were pretty quick to put me in the ambulance and take me straight there. And yeah, people were not uh, were not laughing around, you know. You can tell when something's serious. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then I woke up in the hospital. I had this amazing uh, nurse in Belgium uh, that looked after me. Uh, yeah. It was... Uh, I was in there for a day and a half and then came back to Sharona. Started the recovery process. It was more or less a similar recovery time from last time. Uh, and I was just like, all right, just going to do the exact same thing that I did in April. Uh, the season's still sal- salvageable. Uh, so, and it was. Uh, were, you, were you motivated yeah. the second time or does the second time get a bit like, oh, like are we, are we back here again? I was super motivated because so many people were saying that my season was done. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I get really motivated by negative motivation. Uh, yeah. And the team doctor was like, take it easy. Like, uh, I probably should have taken it easy, but lucky, I, luckily I got away with it. Uh, it could have gone south, but, um, yeah, I just came back up to altitude. I find that if I'm up here at altitude doing a three week block, it's like training at sea level for five weeks. You can just get fit super fast. Um, and luckily the weather was still good up here. Uh, and yeah, came back to the Italian races pretty motivated and looking for a job. So if I'm not motivated in that situation, I, I don't know what is. Um, yeah, it sounds like you're in the right career, like you're doing the right thing. There's a lot of yeah, blood, if like, I, that stuff's yeah. hard. And then to crash yeah. and then have to do it all again. Yeah, I mean, uh, but I'm not a one-off. I mean, like if you look at every bike rider that's made a career of this sport, uh, they have three stories of this and they also enjoy the process. Uh, Do you yeah, enjoy the process? Uh, yeah. Like I, I, I'm like, we're all a bit of a, a sicko, aren't we? Yeah. Like uh, cyclists, like this year was pretty grim, but I still finished it being like, that was, I'll do it again. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't think it gets much, much worse than that. Uh, I don't think so. But, uh, and then just to kick it off, I, I got those three riders that got sick the day before Lombardia, the day before my first monument, and I couldn't start my first monument. So that was uh, just a bit of a full stop at the end of 2021. What'd you get? Uh, COVID? Uh, well, I still have it. I, you can kind of hear that I'm a bit like uh, blocked. Mm. Uh, and this is two and a half weeks later. Uh, it's not COVID. I got tested three times. Um, I don't know what it is. Just a fever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Jimmy, like congrats on getting back to where you are now. Like that is a huge achievement in itself. And to be in a good m- mindset with the amount of setbacks that you've had this year is um, significant and shows that you're in the uh, right game. So congrats on that. And we wish you all the best in uh, hopefully getting a, a job over the next few weeks. Yeah. Cheers. If you, if you see me around town in Hawthorne or Camwell, over the next few weeks, you know it's good news. Yep. So. Sounds good. Cheers. Hope to see you then. Cool. Thanks, see ya. Mate.